Hi there. Okay, so the countdown is on. Before you know it, you're going to be sending the kids back to school. This morning, we're going to sit down with the superintendent of the Seattle Public Schools. Denise Juneau is here talking about some of the changes the parents are going to notice this year. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Yep, uh, let's start with advice for parents right now. We're, we're thinking about heading back yep. to school. The kids are sort of dreading it in some cases. So, um, what can families be doing now to get ready for school? Yeah, I think it's important as we look forward to school is check out your school's website. And if there are open houses, attend those and sort of let your student kind of understand what was going to happen in school. Um, start the routine early, you know, in the summertime, oftentimes routines get off. And so ease back into the routine. You don't want right. to have just the early bed the night before. Right. And so just <laughs> like start easing into that and just kind of start having conversations. We actually had a Seattle Super Readers sort of um, campaign this summer, so make sure your students still have time to read books. We should be reading 20 minutes a day um, so that we aren't losing any um, space before you go into school. And so that's go. still important. Now you had a five-year strategic plan. Mm -hmm. It was approved by the school board this year. So, so tell us about the five-year strategic yeah, plan. Yeah, so when I started, I did this huge listen and learn tour all across the city. And it was just really important for me to understand the district, to understand the city, um, and kind of understand what families needed out of our system. S super important to me. It really laid the foundation for our new strategic plan. We're calling it Seattle Excellence. It's really going to be based on providing a world-class education to everybody, but we're also going to be really focusing in on students of color furthest from educational justice, looking at black excellence within our system, focusing in on African-American males, and really trying to move the dial around this year, this next year, um, early literacy and third grade reading. And that has to be one of the profound challenges with the Seattle School mm -hmm. District because it is so diverse and there are so many different areas um, getting different levels of education, different focuses on yeah. education. So why the, the African-American males? Why the focus there? When we look at data, it is the disproportionality. It is, we look at special education data, they're overrepresented there. Um, we look at reading scores. We just need to do a better job of changing our system. You know, I often say there are no broken students, there are only broken systems. And so we have to do a better job as a district of looking internally about how do we provide supports that are better, looking at partnerships because it's not just on education, it's housing, it's transportation, it's a lot of things that everybody in the city can sort of play a role in. And so it is something that if we're going to do well by everybody, we need to raise everybody. everybody and, and it has to start very early, right? Yeah. So, so that focus begins early. So how, how do you implement that from a, from a very early standpoint, particularly with African Americans? Right. So it is like the thing that we did this summer, Seattle Super Readers. We'll continue that, talking about the importance of early literacy, pre-K-3 reading. We we know students have to be reading by third grade if they're really going to be successful in school. And so we'll be putting a lot of focus on pre-K-3 reading, looking at warm, um, inviting environments, learning environments for our students, making sure that they feel safe and that they feel like they belong in our school system. But we will be focusing really heavily on pre-K-3 reading pulling in a lot of different partners, making sure we're putting those efforts there, and again, making sure we're changing our structures so that we can better meet the needs of students and families. We're implementing a dress code. Um, tell us about this, the, the no body shaming right. allowed plan. Super proud of this policy. Um, the lead person in our district, they worked with students. I mean, it was really, it's heavy in student voice of saying, let's not, let's get away from body shaming. Let's get away from really paying attention to things that aren't important and pay more attention to actually what's happening in the classroom so students are learning. Okay. And so it's pretty open. It is making sure you wear a top, a bottom, and shoes. And okay. that there are, you can't, of course, wear racist t-shirts. You can't wear gang-affiliated materials. You can't do certain things, but for the most part, it is allowing students to really express their identity to uh, and, and be able to present themselves as they see themselves in school and sort of we pay more attention to what's going on in the class. And it'll be here before we know it. It's right around the corner. <laughs> right. Denise, you know, thank you so yeah, much. Thanks so much. To have you thanks here for this having morning. me. And thank you for joining us here on Q13 News this morning. We'll see you tomorrow morning starting at 4.30 a.m.